Good morning, everybody, and, and welcome to our session this morning. I'm Brad Greenway. I'm past president of the National Pork Board. And today, our panel is going to be our barn doors open. I know everybody maybe will look down, but anyway, the, the, the topic of the session today is transparency on our farms. Joining me on the stage today, we have three people that have been very active. We have Chris Souls, we have Aaron Brenneman, and we have Tom Titus. You know, the Pork Board has done a number of initiatives that we are trying to Consumers today are definitely want to know what we're doing on their farms. And so the, the topic of our conversation today and what this panel is going to discuss is how we can open up our barn doors and let people know what we're doing on our farm. We've got a number of things we're doing at the National Pork Board, Operation Main Street, where we empower producers to go out and give them the tools to talk to community groups. Uh, we also have social media using the hashtag Real Pig Farming. So on our panel today, just in a little bit, I'm going to tell you, uh, we'll let Aaron and Chris and, and Thomas talk about and, and answer the question and talk about their operation. But I'm going to tell you a little bit how this is going to work. we got some questions, and we're going to let them answer the questions. We also, if you've got a question from the audience oops, that you excuse me, that you want to ask, if we get through our questions we kind of got that we would like them to answer, and you've got a question, by all means, get them to Claire Masker or Mike King, uh, and, and let's ask them the questions. So with that, I'd like to have our panel introduce yourself and let's have some fun today. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here and uh, be back in Iowa and not dancing, back to back to farming and uh, being here and being a part of the uh, World Pork Expo and uh, getting back to being able to discuss important issues that uh, we as producers know and deal with every day, whether it's mar markets or the challenges that uh, the, the public throws at us in, in challenging our, uh, our industry. Uh, uh, today is about uh, you know, celebrating the uh, successes that we've had and uh, also promoting youth interaction and getting them involved in uh, a really cool industry that we're a part of. Um, a little bit about my farming operation. I farm in Northeast Iowa, uh, Fayette County, and uh, we farm about 5,000 acres. Uh, we also raise, finish about 20,000 hogs a year. Uh, and uh, one of the first things I did after graduating uh, college was by my first build my first uh, hog building 2400 hit building and uh, you know it was a great opportunity for me as a young guy to get my first step into agriculture and start building equity and and uh, you know those are some of the things that we can uh, you know the story that we need to continue to tell what uh, what we can how young people can get involved in agriculture and, and raising pigs is a big a great way to do that so with that I'm excited to talk with all of you and uh, and, and it's great to be here thank you Conradi, and my brother-in-law Brett Conradi, 
And it's a great opportunity to raise our children in a nurturing environment where we can begin to build some of those core character values so they can come back to our farm and be a value add. And it's something that's extremely important to us and that we're extremely passionate about. And it's really, I'm really excited to be here today to talk about how we share our stories on social media because as we get, begin to move forward and that generational gap continues to widen, it's only going to become more important for my daughters and my nephews to continue this passion and continue to share our farm stories and what we're doing um, to help reach out to the consuming public that doesn't have that relationship with agriculture and doesn't have Aaron Brenneman that she can reach out to uh, through a text message or a Travis Brink with Tyson Foods that we can talk to about what's going on in the pork markets where we can really begin to understand where the food's coming from and really begin to build that relationship with the consumers and that's something that we're really trying to do as advocates um, respectively a little bit differently but we all have the same passion and the same goals okay well, well thank you and there's kind of a little bit of background and, and uh, i guess one thing and as farmers none of us are comfortable being transparent you know we've always you know let's, let's just do our day-to-day -day business and and that has got to change consumers are demanding that we need to build trust and so there's a whole lot of different levels of transparency and i guess i'd start out with chris and you probably have been more transparent than anybody now we're going to talk about the farm can you tell us what transparency on your farm means to you and, and uh and tell us about your farm story and what transparency and how you do that yeah uh i took transparency to a whole other level i believe uh, in life and on my farming operation uh going through this process and, and being on the bachelor at least that was my first taste of true transparency and bringing people from LA to to my farm and, and having them see what we do here. And it was really, uh, it, was, it was kind of opened my eyes to how important it is for us to truly to work harder at telling our story because everybody came and, and saw the farming operation and they, their perceptions when they got there were, you know, totally changed after they left. You know, typically they, they're either thinking it's, you know, something that, five pigs and five cows and just a small operation and, or it's it's large corporate farming factory farms and that sort of thing and they don't it, when, once they uh, were able to see what we had going on it, it I think it totally changed the way they viewed agriculture awesome. so Aaron would you like to elaborate and you, you've been very active in, in transparency to you about exposing your farm great I always like to elaborate I'm go. sorry <laughs> Um, no, it, it, you know, transparency for us is, is incredibly important, but at the same time, it, it's very easy. You know, when you're you're passionate about what you do and, and you believe in what you're doing, you know, you have nothing to hide, and it's very easy to share that sort of thing. Um, you know, and I think people really appreciate the transparency and, and opening the farm doors and, and letting you come in and just see what we do. And we believe in what we do. We, we don't want to hide anything from anybody. And, and people really do appreciate that openness, definitely. I mean, if you look back at my Facebook uh, news feed about a year ago, I mean, I took a few pictures. I wasn't overly active on social media. And then there was this young lady by the name of Claire Masker that sent me an email saying, hey, we're doing this really cool thing with hashtag grow pig farm. And that was really like a springboard. And that's what really began to inspire me and really began to push me to start making this more of a priority every single day. And the thing is, it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, we all have smartphones. We all have the capability to post a picture on the Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or whatever you guys are comfortable with utilizing. And it's a great way to share what we're doing on our farms, um, whether we're farrowing pigs like Aaron every day, um, or we're grinding feed, or we're planting corn and soybeans, or we're trying to share some of the technologies that we're using. Um, it's a great way, and it's a, a very broad community that we can begin to tap into to tell our farm stories and talk about what we're doing. And, reach out to that non-farming public and really begin to increase that trust and transparency that we've lost uh, with generational uh, generations being removed from agriculture. And utilizing social media really helps give that opportunity uh, to begin to further share our stories, stories. And that's something that's really important to us. Well, I think Thomas, and I know we talked about a little bit of last night, is, is you, you do something kind of unique, of sharing your story. I don't want to talk on that now. And that was a, that's been a, Yes, uh, one way that we do that on our farm in a specific example is we have a purebred Yorkshire gill. Um, her name is Petunia the Pig. You can follow her on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at hashtag Petunia the Pig. I've taken a picture of Petunia every single day since she was born. And now, actually, um, the intent of Petunia is she was going to be shown uh, and she's going to be a mother herself. So, I mean, 
at the same time she is a food animal, but she is going to be a mother. And the young man that actually owns her today was in the crowd, but Caleb uh, Kaiser, a young man from Southern Illinois, is going to show Ken, or show Petunia for her state fair, and he's going to raise her, and he's going to barrel her, and he's done a great job with keeping up with taking pictures of Petunia every day. And really, what the the entire purpose of the program is really not only to share what we're doing on our farms and showing what Petunia experiences every single day, but to inspire that next generation of advocates, give them that additional inspiration, and give them that additional fuel to understand why it's important to share what you're doing on the farms because some of those things that we do may seem like very mundane tasks whether we're dumping a feed bucket or checking bullet tanks or we're making sure that last batch of feed was ground um, our consumers are extremely interested about those things about how we're raising their food how it's getting to their table and uh, petunia the pig is just one way that we do that and how we share our farm story yeah, I, I just thought that was a neat story i mean to tie an animal in with it and let people have fun and to show your kids and, and so there's different ways I mean we have Thomas using a, 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 a pig that, that gets some more followers and Chris obviously bringing out a lot of people from all over the over the country to his farm and I guess Aaron I'd start with you on this question here how do you get over that initial hesitation to, to get into social media or what you know Thomas said the real big hashtag it was kind of got him fired up what was the thing that got you over that hesitation I'm going to get involved with in this yeah I mean the real um, real thing for me like I said before, it, it's just my experience growing up and never having to even drive past the farm necessarily. And I know there's so many people like that. Um, and, and that's my, my driving motivation to, to share what we do because it, it's amazing what we do every day. It really is. And it's and it's so beautiful. And, and I do it through pictures, maybe not necessarily with Petunia, like pictures of sunrises and sunsets and, and you know, everything about the farm, around the farm. Like I said, you you know we raise pigs. That's, that's the easy part. You, Part, but you know, I mean, you know that we're there raising pigs, and so that's important to share. But it, it's also very important to share everything else about us. You know, we are a family farm, and we do family stuff. And you know, that we have. Uh, I have one particular um, post I had with bald eagles. There's bald. It's crazy. There's bald eagles everywhere this spring. It, they were everywhere, and I so I took pictures of bald eagles all over this tree right by our farm. It was like one of the most shared. I mean, it's probably nothing staggering front to your numbers, but like <laughs> on the Brenham and Quark side, it was very well shared. Um, but, and it had nothing Maybe to do with- Maybe you don't want some of my followers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should be thankful, I don't know. Um, but you know, it was a little frustrating because I'm like, we're a pig farm and people are following us to learn about, and all you guys share is something about bald eagles, but at the same time, you know, I think it showed how well-rounded and, and are real people living in a real world thing. I mean, what it does is it gives us an opportunity to personalize who we are. I mean, we're not just as the connotation of a factory farm. I mean, we're families. I mean, 97% of all farms are family farms. And it gives us an opportunity to share that other side, I mean, that personalized side of what we're doing on our farms, how we're raising our families, and how passionate we are about bringing that next generation back. Yeah, I, I, uh, well, yeah, you sure do. <laughs> I, uh, I, I can relate to a lot of farmers out there and that I really had no interest in being a part of social media and, uh, and, and being put into being a public figure now that I am, I sort of was thrust into that role and uh, then I, it's been really neat to, to start to post things about agriculture and take away, you know, I'm not, on a, I'm not a TV star and that's, that's not me, I'm a farmer and putting that, those things out there Everybody wants more. I see the comments. People want more and more. So it's been really cool to be able to share what what my passion is, and uh, and and what I want to do going forward is to help tell that story. And I think it's important for all of us to to uh, to, uh, to to begin to do that. To, and uh, and I think that people really will, will respond positively if we continue to to show the awesome story that we have to tell. Very good. Maybe what we need to do is get Chris and just start dispensing some of them followers on him. We'll get, a, we'll get a little bit to everybody out here. But, you know, and, and we had some good comments. And, and by all means, if you've got a question, make sure you get it to Mike or Claire. I mean, we're going to have time to get some of your questions. So by all means, get them each side of the room. I guess when we talked about the comments and, and positive comments. How do you and, and everybody, we've all seen some negativity out there in the industry and some things. How do you guys keep it positive? And, and I guess if you could elaborate on, you know, you get some negative comments, do you respond to them, or if it keeps going, or first thing, how do you keep your social media positive? 
where most of us are. I get a few negative comments, but it's not relating to farming, typically. Well, that's good. So why don't you, I mean, so do you respond to some of them, or I guess here's a little different case, but please. Yeah, I guess I just keep it positive by putting up pictures that that are pretty hard to, you know, give a negative comment to. I mean, there's so much positive that's that we have that we see every day that most people don't get to see. And uh, so I, I focus on, you know, like she said, the sunsets and, and the views from the tractor and things like that, that, uh, uh, you know, just, just show the positive things about agriculture. Uh, one day I, well, I, I would take, I took a picture of my commute from my apartment to the dance studio in LA. It was just packed with cars every morning. It was a three mile drive, but it took me 30, 40 minutes. And uh, you know, it got kind of irritating, and I posted a picture uh, about that. And then when I got home, the first thing I did was hop in a tractor and go and and, uh, and plant corn. And I took a picture of that commute, uh, and that was my morning commute once I got home. And it was a you know, it got 30, 40 thousand likes. Both of them did. So it was, it was a you know, to see the, the differences of what our lifestyle is compared to what it is in the city, and, and just informing people of the positives that we do that agriculture has. Yeah, very good. And, and we think of that and as farmers, you know, there's so many things that are positive every day we're doing on the farm. And, and don't think that people aren't interested in that. So very good comment. Karen, how do you keep yours positive? Because yeah. you're showing production stuff, you're showing right. whatever. And, and how do you keep the, your social media positive? Right. And, and once again, I bounce back to the, to the every, everything that we really are. <laughs> Not this, you know, it, it, and I don't feel like social media has to be attacking burning issues. I mean, by any means. It's just, it's showing who you are. And, um, rounding yourself out so the people know you, trust you. And then if they have a question, they can come to you and ask you about those burning issues. And then you are, once again, you're a reliable source for them. Because Google is not a reliable source. <laughs> and and, um, and we need to be, you know, farmers need to be the voices about farming. And so, it, and it, like you said, it's just showing all those little things that you see that catches your eye and makes you think, and that's what I think people appreciate. And so the negative stuff, they're just, they've got nothing really to say, nothing new. And I tell like these guys, I'm like, we have a different new fun story every single day. And that's such a neat thing for us to have. And so it, sometimes it's irritating, but it has to just be well, fresh past it. Thomas, you probably deal with that more than I even do. You, you, you probably I might bring it upon myself sometimes more than I should. Because, I mean, our negative detractors are typically pretty loud and boisterous and whatever they, they are, and they're sometimes can be very vicious, they like to cut right to your core. But a lot of those times, those people on Twitter are just an egg, they're nobody. So you have to begin to understand the conversations you really want to engage in. But it's sometimes those tough conversations that you have to have, it's those bystanders that are watching that, that you really can help make that impression on. It might not be fun, it might not be comfortable, but sometimes you have to have those type of conversations with people on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram uh, to continue to broaden your outreach and educate um, the general consumer about where their food's coming from and it's extremely important to, to continue to do that. I think uh, it's also, I mean, if, if you just want to post pictures and, and you know have fun with it and, and show people and make it, so I think it adds a level of personal, it adds a personable level. I mean, I think people are so disconnected, they don't know who who farmers are right now. They don't know, they, they think factories and they, they don't think about family, you know, they don't think about family farms. They think about factory farms. And that's the that's what we need to, we, we can squash that very easily by showing what's really going on. And I think they made some good points. And, you know, putting a face on behind the food. You know, I just related one of my, I, I spoke to a group down in Texas, I think it was, and, and this gal, when I got done talking, she says, uh, Brad, she says, I trust what you're doing, and she had no idea who I was from Adam. She said, I trust what you're doing, but how do I know all the rest of the pork producers or pork pig farmers are doing the same thing? And she didn't know me, but it was putting a face on, and that's what these three are doing, is putting a face on farming and what they're doing every day. And so that's really what it takes, is opening up and doing that. Erin has got a little different perspective. I mean, she comes from the city, so she's probably got a, a lot of friends that, you know, that she can do. My wife's in the same situation. She said, Brad, you get up and talk, and I'll do the tweeting and the Facebook, but again, from the city. And so she's got friends that have no connection to the farm, 
and, and so it's a unique opportunity. And so we've got a great cross section here of people. So Aaron? Yeah, and I've had several opportunities just from friends back home wanting to come and see our firm. And so that's like to me, if one person has done that, I've, I've done my job. And, and so, you know, if come to me instead of going somewhere else. Um, I've done my job in offering personal interaction, maybe not recommended in your situation, but in ours, <laughs> offering a personal interaction is a huge, very powerful thing um, for anybody that has questions, whether it may seem hostile or not, um, oftentimes is, is really neat. a phone call, like we've lost our personal interaction, phone call or a hard visit is very powerful in that situation. Okay, very good. Well, we've got some questions from the audience, so keep coming. Um, if you do. This one here says, with social media media being so big now, how have you dealt with negative comments? We talked about the positive, and a couple of you touched on the negative comments. Of, and did they say about GMOs? And so GMOs, and, and we're talking about pig farming too. So it's something we like to tackle that. We talked about some positive, we touched on the negative, but if you want to elaborate on some negatives of but there's GMOs, pig farming. I get negative comments on GMOs every day, but I honestly, I just don't go there. I, 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 I don't think that I could, when people post negative comments on social media, I just, I don't necessarily use it to, to create an argument because I really can't in my position. Um, uh, just, it, and I don't think you could really truly convince someone when they, when they have those kind of opinions, sometimes it's a fight that I'm not, I'm not willing to tackle, you know? But uh, I think there are, people out there, I think, you know, I think Thomas, you probably are a little more proactive in taking that battle on than, than I probably am. When you get 30,000 likes on one post and probably 1,000 comments, it's probably tough to keep up. Whenever we only have a couple hundred likes and like 10 comments, it's a lot easier for us to keep up with responding to that. So, but yeah, whenever we do get negative comments like that, it depends upon the type of question, who it's coming from. If it's a real person, I always try to respond to that question. But if they have a real heartfelt question about why we're doing something, I always try to respond. Um, but if it's somebody that doesn't have a personal picture up there, it doesn't seem like it's a real person, it's just somebody trying to uh, detract away from what we're what I'm doing on my Facebook page, how I'm trying to share my story. Usually I won't feel those conversations, but whether it's GMOs, antibiotics, the type of housing systems we utilize for our states, I, I try to be open and very transparent to help build that trust with our consumers. If they have a real question, I try to answer it. You gotta learn to filter what's uh, uh, somebody who's just misinformed versus somebody who's being disrespectful. And, and learn to filter that kind of, to not prioritize, but um, answer on that anyway. I think my goal with social media, personally, is just to try to continually spread the message of the good things that are out there. There's always gonna be that, that percentage that is going to disagree with certain things, but if we continually make it personal, then I think we can make a, a lot of strides in, in, in our industry. And, uh, and those, those those conversations about GMOs and those sort of things are things that we need to have, but uh, yeah. just using it for simply making it positive, and that's, that's what, and, and, and I ignore the negative. Very good, very good comment, and, and, and sometimes picture battles, you know? I think they've alluded to that too. Don't go there if you. And so anyway, great. More questions coming from the audience here. How has social media changed for you on the farm today versus a year ago? Uh, social media for me, it really doesn't add to our uh, number of pigs born per year, or pigs per shot per year. Um, but it's something that's extremely important. You have to realize that there is an uh, intrinsic value to it um, that goes beyond yourself. It's not something that's a, always a value add, but it ensures that there's going to be an opportunity for that next generation because our consumers have real questions, they have real concerns about where the food's coming from, and that's only going to continue to occur. It's only going to continue that generational gap to broaden. So I think it's extremely important to show what we're doing on our farm, whether it's through simple pictures or posting on farm tours or uh, through interviews or phone calls with direct consumers. Um, it's very important to continue to have that passion and um, utilize social media as a tool because it's such a broad community. I mean, Chris can reach out to hundreds of thousands of people, and I think I can reach out to maybe like 2,000 people. So it's a great tool to be able to share our farm story, and that community is just so broad. I mean, you can reach people from across the world about what we're doing on our farms, and their questions and concerns are real, so it's a great platform to, to talk about and harbor that conversation. 
Thomas, we've actually added things for South for years since I've been doing social media. <laughs> but <laughs> no, um, the social media. What that has done. Attention, is please. The Pork Checkoff sponsored Pork Academy seminar. Sow Lifetime Productivity, presented by Chris Hostetler, will be starting at 9.15 a.m. in the Varied Industries Building, meeting room C. Um, it has made us a reliable place to go for, uh, it has opened up opportunities to bring some really amazing people through our firm, let's just put it that, and we've become a reliable source for that and influential people um, that you want to see what it's really like. And, and you know, I'm pretty proud of that to say that, you know, we're able to bring through some of these people that we do. And not only that, but the young minds too, and the younger and people that want to see what it's all about. I, I mean, to me, that's just very exciting to have them come and see it all. Now, I know what Chris has planned. He's probably got auto steer, so he can step there and comment. Now, I have not figured out how Thomas and Aaron are gonna pull pigs and still be Responding to comments, but you remember the they've been able to figure out how to do it. I'm still working on it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to another question here. It says, uh, What would you tell those people who are hesitant to share their farm story, especially the larger farms, and whatever that means? But you know, it's always it seems like you know the, the larger ones, and again, whatever number that is, are confined with it. And how do we get those involved in? in how can you encourage the people in our audience to share their story? And especially the larger ones or maybe the things that are a little controversial. Right? A farm isn't defined by its size, it's defined by the people who run it and the passion that they have. So if you're a, I'm a 750 South Barrow to finish operation, there's a 20,000 South Barrow to finish operation. That size difference is huge, but we still have the same passion, we still have the same goals. And it's about family, it's about sharing what we do and having a passion for bringing back that next generation. And, and that's really what it's about. It doesn't matter how big of a farm that you are, it doesn't mean that the connotation is going to be different. I'm quite a bit smaller than what Aaron is, and I get the exact same type of pressure. Um, but you still have to be positive, as we tried to talk about earlier. I mean, we're showing the good things that we're doing on our farms, and, and that's what's really nice. I mean, we, we do great things every day. There's something new every day that we do on our farms. Um, that's extremely interesting to our consumers. So, um, I mean, that's really what we try to do. Yeah, um, I, my experience with this has been obviously different. When they, my thrust into the public eye was one of the first things they wanted me to tell them about the farm. Everybody about what my farming operation was like. And, and part of that was, uh, you know, telling them how many acres we farm and how many pigs we finished. And, it, I was hesitant at first, and I didn't really know how, I didn't really want to say that that's how I think my dad is, you know, most farmers are. But at the end of the day, I felt like that was the only way to really give the public a true perspective on what farming is today. I mean, there's large farms and small farms, but just because we farm 5,000 acres and finish 20,000 pigs, it doesn't mean we're a factory farm. I mean, I think that's where that perspective needs to be changed and, uh, you know, giving everybody that that idea of what a farm size, a typical farm size is today, because we're still a family farm, still ran by my dad and my mom and I and, and a few employees. But uh, I think it uh, getting over that hump is, is important, and uh, we need to be proud of whatever farm size it is. Like like Thomas said, it's not about the size; it's about it's not about the size. It's not about the size. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to go to Aaron with this next question. <laughs> I'm not really sure she's going to be able to continue on that. I work on a side farm every day, and I can play along. Um, no, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, and, you know, I guess I think as far as the consumer is concerned, if, if you have more than a couple pigs outside, you are a factory farm. You, you know, I, I don't know what the definition is either, uh, necessarily, you know, but Thomas and I, like you said, you know, we're all different sides, but, you know, we still seem to get along. Uh, and, and, and I think it's important for us to remember that as producers, that we cannot start to pit ourselves against each other in, in that way. You know, there is a place for everybody, and I think that that's very important to stress. Um, you know, and that we we all need to be together in our different styles, whatever's best for us. Um, that being said, no way is better than the other necessarily. It's all it's all how how you wish it, and 
and how passionate you are about it. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I know I, I, run, I run into that quite often, but you, and I keep going back to that. That's why it's important for me to share all those other things about us, um, to shape the shape that vision of who we really are. And then, oh, by the way, here, if you have questions, we can show you. And, and, and I think that's, that's fun. I think the panel brought up a great point here. We see it in the pork industry, the diversity. And so it's important that everybody, whatever size you are, to post out there, whether you're a 4-H show pick person, whether you're a very large integrator, whether you're a contract finisher, post stuff out there, let people know that the diversity in the industry, and it's no different whether it's props, uh, you know, what it is, all sizes, and uh, whoever made the point, whether it was there and about, we can't be pitting one farm against the other. There's room for everybody, and that's, we've got choices, and let's, and let's appreciate that. Another question from the audience is, have you found that a person with a negative comment is surprised when you actually respond? And then are they open to two-way engagement? I mean, they throw a comment out there and you respond, does that take them by surprise or uh, comment on that? What are you I mean, sometimes it does. There was one egg on Twitter that I actually harbored a conversation with. Whenever I say egg, that's typically I consider they're not a real person. They're someone that's just a contractor. But I had harbored a conversation with them for probably about a week. They continued to ask PM our personal message questions about what we do in our farm, and every single time they would try to scaffold to a different place. But every single time, I responded in a positive way. I responded to their question respectfully. And why I continue to have that conversation? They didn't take that down a dark path. They didn't start dropping using curse words. They didn't say I was the first person in the world. And by having that conversation, I mean, I found out about their family, where they were from, and began to really understand who they were, even though their entire purpose on Twitter was to defame us as farmers. And I think I really began to have a breakthrough with maybe not all farmers are so bad. Maybe we do have some compassion for our animals. And we are out there trying every day to, to be able to raise a, a safe and nutritious you know, not only for our own families, because we're going to the same grocery stores, but theirs as well. And that's something that's extremely important. Aaron, I'll let you go next on this one. So if you want to throw something that's embarrassing, you go right ahead. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Yeah. Um, no, what, what you're saying is true. Um, I personal interaction. So um, usually, I, you know, we'll, I, I will offer, hey, give us a call. This is really hard to do, you know, in 140 characters at a time. You know, or, or around Facebook, you know, just call up and we'll talk with you. We have no problem with that, but I you can't type that fast and explain that. Um, and usually, usually, um, they kind of, they go away, which is a little disappointed, you know, kind of really, but a little disappointing because, you know, there was an opportunity for them to see. But I, I, I think they, most people do appreciate that. We offer farm visits to whoever wants to come out and see that, and people really do appreciate that. Um, or it's a good way to get them to disappear if you want them to. <laughs> so they don't want to. They don't want to see your face. They don't want to know who you are. Um, but people have honest questions too. And they appreciate that. And, and Aaron is obviously taking it to the next level. You really open her doors up. I mean, I'm sure you got all the the protocol, but letting people come out and let them actually see what goes on in the farm. And so that's stepping it up the next notch. Chris, negative. I mean, are people surprised when you respond to a negative comment, or do you? And, and your situation is different, but. The, yeah, I think I, I, I'm more on the stance where I, I just haven't gone there with a lot of that, uh, with responding to some of the negative comments. I get negative comments all over the board, so I, I, I honestly don't read a lot of comments because sometimes that can be depressing. <laughs> well, that's true, though. I mean, I don't, I mean, I almost make them a policy, I'm like, I don't read comments unless somebody brings it to my attention, like, did you see that comment? Usually, like, you guys, in Face of the Farming, Thomas and I are both uh, Face of the Farming ranching for USFRA, and the, we'll talk all internally, and they're like, did you read that comment? I'm like, no, I didn't do any interviews, <laughs> you know, because it does, it gets you kind of like, oh my gosh, what is, you know, but just got to keep looking forward, and so... Also, that, that's great. So you've got kind of a support staff with, yeah. with each other, you know. And, and, and I make Thomas read my comments. There you go. <laughs> and that's the real nice thing about hashtag real pig farming and the social forces group that whenever we do have a challenge or we have a post that's gone down a, a, a sour path, we've got a group of people that we can call upon to help support the post we are, talk about what they're doing on their own individual farms and how they're raising their animals, they're growing their crops. It's, it's really good, and that's a great support system we have within the National Pork Board's Hashtag Real Pig Farming Program. And not only that, but if we have something going on, a conversation going on, lots of times we'll hop on, we'll network with each other and be like, hey, you know, it's nice to see another farmer's perspective instead of me just commenting on this. You know, would you want to jump in there and help 
that mine, I kind of narrowed down, mine come from my three-year-old um, out in South Farm, and he was able to put together the fact that there's a lot of moms out here, and there's a lot of babies, where's all the dads? And so, <laughs> so that was, you know, we didn't go quite go there. We have a couple dads, I showed them those. They're, they're ladies, man. <laughs> Um, I actually, I mean, the, I had to talk to my wife last night to, to think about what the funniest thing was and kind of tapping into my children. Uh, I was in the farrowing barn with uh, with my daughter, Reagan, she's three, and we were uh, we were working with some of the sows one day, and amongst pork producers, I feel comfortable saying this, Dad, where'd your arm go? <laughs> Sometimes we feel like people are being ignorant of what we do, and we can't go at it like, being angry with people. I mean, people really just have no idea, and they're and they're thirsty for the knowledge, and they just need a good source. So. Yeah, you have to be patient with those questions, and, and you know, answer them honestly, because they honestly want to know. I mean, regardless of how elementary the question is, it's it's they're they're asking a question and really want to know, and to take the time because some of this stuff, this is. We grew up doing all these things, and getting those questions may seem like, what, you know, it's not even worth answering because you just have no understanding. But take the time and, and be patient and answer them as best you can. Then laugh at them later. That makes sense when you're at a, at a, a forum thing. <laughs> Do we have any other questions from the audience? I don't know where we're at on time, and I, if there's any other questions out there. If not, we're going to move on, and then by all means, ask the question. I get, you, you've heard, I mean, some of the funny questions from the, from the mother's son in the Fairland barn to, to bringing somebody actually out on the farm and, and taking a look. And you got to realize we're one and a half percent or one and a half to two percent of the population. And so I appreciate their comments that there is never a bad question. You know, they just don't understand. And so that's our job here is to help people understand what we do every day. And so um, what was the, you know, we're going to kind of get in. What's the most rewarding thing for you guys to be a pig farmer? Well, you know, we've been told time and time again, feeding the world has no resonance with people anymore, which is unfortunate. But, uh, it, I mean, that's, to me, that's just so cool that I, growing up in the city and, and what I do every day has such a huge purpose. Um, I, it, it is rewarding. And then the farm tours and be, bringing people through and then seeing people get excited about what I do every day. Um, I, I, that's rewarding too. That's really cool to see people that that connection. We let farm tours pull pigs all the time, and that connection, like they pull that pig, and they're so excited to dry them off and stuff. I, to see people excited about that is like full circle for me. I that. What would you tell, just to elaborate just a bit on that, Aaron? I mean, to the people out there. I mean, you obviously bring them right into your farm. I mean, they go through the protocol and anything that you worry about of getting. How do you vet that person or that family that comes out, or um, you know, knowing that they don't have an undercover? Camera or how, I mean, you're very open, and, and anything you do, or just to make sure you're that. What are they going to see that we don't want them to see? There's nothing. If we believe in what we do, and sure, you want to go take a picture of a sow in a crate and make it look bad. You can, you will, and, and that's and that's been done before. But for our, us to be open about what we do, I think people really appreciate that. And so, yeah, I mean, fire security, that's that simple, and we let them know about our protocols and they shower in and um, yeah, lots of times I think they really appreciate that, that how the steps that you take to ensure your pig's health and, and I, I think they really like that part of things. So truly are opening up and, and here's what we do every day. Thomas, go ahead. What's the most rewarding about being a big part? I mean kind of building upon some of the sentiments Aaron referenced is whenever you can really make that connection um, with our consumers, that non-farming group that don't understand what we do every day. And like I said before, I mean, they have those mundane, they think some, some of those things that we think are mundane tasks, um, but they're very interesting to them. I mean, they have real questions and they have real concerns about where their food's coming from. And, um, just by posting pictures on, on Facebook and Twitter, um, we've had families from Chicago and Pennsylvania that have just came down to the farm if they're passing through on vacation um, or they're back in Illinois seeing family. And we had one family from Chicago that came down and, and said, I've always dreamed of holding a baby pig. 
and it felt really good to be able to make that connection of where their food comes from because she had no idea how pigs were grown and raised. She just saw some cute pictures of baby pigs I was putting on Facebook. She's like, I want to see that thing. And so I was able to make that happen and make that a very rewarding experience. And that really begins to, to fuel the fire and really makes you want to get up every day and just continue to share your farm story, whether it's utilizing social media or on farm tours or whatever it might be. Chris? Yeah. Uh, I, so there's nothing more rewarding than taking a 12 pound pig and turning it into a 70 pound pig and, and watching those pigs grow and, and be healthy. And, and the genetics that are out there today are so impressive. But, you know, it's, it, there's that hands on uh, work that you do that you get to see your end result and your, you know, the, the rewards that come to fruition within six months. It's just a, an exciting, uh, exciting thing to be a part of. And, you know, on the other hand, there's also the, 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 the investment aspect, equity that I've been able to build by, you know, investing in, in pig production has been, you know, that's, that's obviously that's rewarding. You know, it's a cool, there's, there's opportunity that's in, in pig production for young people, and that's what, that's what, uh, where I got my start. So I think that's, you know, it's exciting to be able to, you know, hopefully we can get more youth that, that will come in and, and uh, see the opportunity that we, that, that this industry has. And that's something, I mean, I always elaborate. <laughs> Sorry. You know, that I gotta get all in. Um, that we've been passionate about, and I think is so cool, is, you know, people always ask, you know, if you're a larger firm, why do you grow? Or why are you gonna be so big? And it's like, we don't, we don't grow because we wanna be big, we grow because people want us to grow. We grow because young people come to us and they wanna get a start in agriculture, so they might put up a big building for us, and we can't, you can't turn that down, you know, that's, that's the core of it all. And so we, you know, we grow because the community basically asks us to grow it, and they appreciate us being there. And, and that's just a really neat thing. And, and that's the part that I don't think people, they don't, I mean, I know people don't see and don't understand. You know, you don't grow because you want to be big. You, I mean, and, and what better people to grow than people that are really passionate about what they do. That's an awesome comment. And you can see the passion up here on every one of them. On everyone's a little different on why they love being a big farmer and why they're doing the things that they do every day and everybody in this audience and on these grounds has some connection to the big industry and they've got a passion for it so that's awesome. I think we're getting close to winding down here as a time wise probably. I guess I'd like some closing comments or is there any other questions before we kind of close things out? Just raise your hand if you... Oh yeah. You know you guys talk about raising things and all those kinds of things and that's kind of the neat part about bringing people on your farm. Um, you know, you said some of the comments were like wanting to do from the three year olds and you got that realization that His comment was the fun part we talked about the raising and pulling pigs and seeing the babies grow, but ultimately they're going to be food. And so, how do they can they make that connection with the audience? Is that fair? Can you, do you relay that to them? Eventually, it's that bacon that we're talking about here. And so, how do you address that? Whoever wants to go. Whenever we begin to have those conversations, because with there are certain segments of uh, our online social community that go straight to that, or you guys just slaughter animals, you just kill animals. <laughs> We raise pigs as a food animal. They have a higher purpose. I mean, they, they nourish not only our own families, but families across the world. And as Aaron said earlier, um, a lot of our consumers aren't satisfied with that response like they were before. But we raise animals in a way that we provide care, we provide compassion, and we provide them the most comfortable environment while we are taking care of them. But we realize that they have a higher purpose. It's not just gruesome. And sometimes whenever you're having those conversations with individuals that go straight to that topic, um, and that's whenever you have to begin to kind of filter through the conversation, what they're really looking for, what their true question is. If, it, if, if they do have a heart pump question, try to answer, but if they go straight to that, typically they're just looking to divulge into a conversation that you probably, a path you don't want to go down anyway. Yeah, you know, for those conversations for me, I mean, we have to be on the same playing field as far as you understand that these pigs are being raised for food. We have to, usually if they're not on the playing field, that it's a very difficult conversation but once you if you start there that we're both on the same page and we do understand that you know then I, I mean 
the only way I feel about it is if they are being raised for food, don't you want them being raised by me who cares for them every day and does all these things to make sure that they are healthy and comfortable, you know, all throughout their life. I, you know, I don't know what else you would want, you know, for them. Um, but I, for me, for those conversations, we got to be on that same, in that same ballpark. Thomas, you probably take on some that are not <laughs> on that same ballpark. But that's okay. That's good that you're, you're good at it. Chris, would you like to answer? Yeah, I mean, I can just kind of echo what they've all said. That it, it, they're all, you know, just focus on the positives again. That the, the pigs have all been raised humanely. That, you know, the final end is as humane as possible. And they're, you know, raised for a purpose. And we're feeding the world. And, and that's what has to happen to, to feed the world. And that being said, with the, all the elementary kids and kindergartners, I mean, they all know what pigs are. No, we don't describe the slaughter process in detail to them when they come to the farm. They all know that they are bacon. I mean, kids know that pigs are food. Even kids know that. I mean, so, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, I guess, I don't know if I answered that. Yep. Oh, I think that, Mike, you've got another question? Oh, okay. 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 Well, good. I think we're, if there's no other questions from the audience, I guess, to, to, as a wrap up, I'd like each of you to uh, not only for me, thank you for being part of that. Thank you to the audience for being here and being engaged and giving us your questions. I guess in a wrap up, I'd like each of you to, I'd like everybody in this room when they leave to have the confidence that they can go out and do something, engage. And so give your perspective and, and uh, your final comments. I mean, it, utilizing social media is extremely easy. I mean, the simple as taking a picture. And Aaron and I, we, 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 we should be getting paid by Google because we've been talking about Snapseed a lot this week um, to do some quick editing of pictures. Um, but utilizing social media is extremely simple. It's just taking a picture, posting it to Facebook, because there's somebody out there telling your farm story today. And it might not always be in the most positive light. So it's not only our job just to take care of the animals, it's our job to take tell our farm stories, talk about what we're doing every single day, and utilizing social media to do that. Because whenever people are telling our stories and they have no idea what we're doing, the passion that we have and the care that we put into raising these animals or growing our crops, it our, becomes another job of ours, another task of ours every day just to continue to help educate the consuming public. Yeah, I think, uh, in, like, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I think there was a period where you didn't, Need to, I mean, there obviously was people. You didn't need to do that. Everybody knew what you did. Um, so that you know, there's some hesitancy, if that's a word, um, hesitation um, for doing that. But I think, really, honestly, we, we have to. I mean, it is not an option anymore. I don't think um, information can be shared so fast, and it can be so wrong. And, and we really all need to go out there in full force and do it. And it's, it doesn't have to be what what we do on social media to that capacity. It could just be a picture here and there. Um, uh, or, you know, feed line's broken. I, I don't know, but, um, you know, I really do think we're at the point where we really all need to step up and, and do this and, and share this because some people are out there telling your story and I don't know if you've been out in the social media world of it, but it, lots of it is um, is not pretty. So we, we, we want to make sure we're doing it right and sharing it. Yeah, I mean, to echo with these guys, uh, again, I mean, we have a great story to tell, and we need to be proud of what we're doing here. People want to hear the story. I and mean, that's, that's, and, and to, we don't have to focus on the negative. People want, there's a lot of people, there's a, a minor percentage that do focus on the negative and, and throw, throw bad comments at us, but there's a lot of people that just want to know. And, uh, and we have a responsibility as those in agriculture to tell the story now, because we are one to two percent of the population, and and, uh, and it's not that hard, and uh, you can have fun with it. And, and uh, but I main thing: be proud and and, uh, and and show what you got going on. Thank you. And I guess just a couple things. And and I'm getting off the National Pork Board, but there's some programs out there, and you guys have a support staff. The National Pork Board, this real pig farming hashtag that you see on the back of, of our shirts. I think right now our VP of Communication is out in New York because they're up for an award. And just think about that. One year ago, it was launched at World Pork Expo, and we're in the process of getting possibly getting the, the top award for the social media in New York right as of today. And so everybody in the room that's been involved with that, thank you for doing that. 
There's Operation Main Street, which is more going out and speaking to, I don't care if it's a group of five people or a group of 500. There's training on that. And so the National Port Board is a good resource to get some of the things that you need to have the confidence to go out there. And so with that, I would just like to say thank you to our panel. Uh, I'm sure they'd like to visit with you afterwards if you've got some time. Um, thank you for being involved the way you are, promoting our industry, and being proud of what you do every day. So let's give them a nice round of applause.